quick word about us. Um, our thing is embedded analytics, so we have a bunch of silicon IP that sits on the chip, monitors what the chip's doing, does various security functions and functional safety functions. Um, silicon proven. Um, we were founded in 2009, VC funded. Um, around about 40 employees now, uh, an HQ in Cambridge in the UK. Um, every presentation needs a triangle. Here's our triangle. Um, so down at the bottom, my pointer's not working, I will point. So basically we're gathering data from the, uh, from the chip. We're turning that data into information to give you more understanding of what's going on on, ch on your chip. And then further processing that to give you some more knowledge about how the system is working long term uh, and, and what you can do to improve it. Um, so a few things to talk about today. Um, really our, our message is that today SOC design, it's all about the system. Um, we've moved beyond the point where we're talking about a core. We're very, we've been very involved in RISC-V. We're very we're pleased and proud that we're, we are that, but it is about more than cores now. And it's about systems. Um, and what you rapidly find out is that understanding system behavior today is it's hard. In fact, it's very, very hard. You've got multiple cores, multiple execution units, thousands of lines of software, tens of thousands of lines of software, all interacting. And actually getting your brain around how that's working together is very difficult. Um, and it says here surprisingly, but given what I said, perhaps not surprisingly, software doesn't always behave in the way that you expect it to. Uh, in fact, there are some figures that say that debugging and it's that process of making it work takes 50 to 75% of the effort of making an SOC today. So it's a pretty high proportion um, and our core business being bring up debug and actually making that system work, we feel that that's a very important aspect to bear in mind. Increasingly, it's also important what the real-time performance of the system is. Um, and that's true not just in kind of more familiar fields like automotive, where you're doing something safety critical, but also in areas like storage, um, where it's actually critical to deliver data in a timely fashion and to do it in a deterministic way so that you know what's going to happen. Um, so what you need to do that is some kind of non-intrusive way to give visibility into the device. Um, so what, what are some of the questions that people are wrestling with? Well, it's quite complicated stuff. Like, well, I designed this thing. Why is my CPU not delivering the number of MIPS that I expected it to? Is that bus transaction authorized? Are, are we obeying our security rules? I get an occasional hang or a deadlock, and that might happen after months or weeks or months of real operation, and it may only happen occasionally. Why does that happen? So there's a bunch of other stuff there, um, but the overall message is it's becoming very difficult to understand these systems. I won't dwell too long on this, um, but basically this is what Ultrasoc does. So the green blocks are the main system, the blue box are ultrasoft blocks. Fundamentally, it's a group of monitors, kind of on the middle section here. There's a message infrastructure, so you can take that information, move it out across the chip, and then there's a bunch of communicators that allow you to get it off the chip and communicate it around the chip. Additionally to that, up top, you'll see Bus Sentinel, Lockstep Manager. So those are two intrusive, if you will, not pure monitoring functions. Uh, the Bus Sentinel, security focused, sits on any chip on chip bus and looks for suspicious transactions, monitors those and can block them pretty much instantaneously if required. Um, so we've been involved with RISC-V for quite a long time now. Um, our CTO, Gaj Panasar, has been uh, leading the effort to standardized on a process of trace specification. I think I'm allowed to say that that's now ratified. So 
There's nobody here who's contributed anything to that, so we can't give them a round of applause. But they deserve not only applause, but cheering. Um, because like, like any standards effort, it's always a, a, a long, hard slog. Um, so congratulations to everybody who, who's done that. Um, what we have at Ultrasoc, we have a, an open source version of the Trace Encoder, which we're offering through the Open Hardware Group, um, which is just intended really to get people up and running quickly and easily, and at pretty much zero cost. Um, we offer evaluation licenses for um, our software to connect up to that, but it really is just a matter of, of getting the platform working. Um, whole lot of tick boxes, looks technical, isn't that technical. Basically, this is how the, the, uh, the thing hangs together in the system. Um, there's an analytic module which will control your RISC V processor, trace encoder, and then out to the message and communications blocks that I showed earlier. Um, and here's a slide with lots of words. So I could stand here and read them, or I could wait until you've read them. What should I do? Should I read them out? I'm not going to read them out. Um, so our next step down the line, um, and my colleague Callum Munner is, uh, is going to be presenting about this on Thursday afternoon, so the plug for Hanan, go and see him present, um, is something called Cycle Accurate Trace, which is increasingly important. As I said earlier, real-time performance is becoming pretty much critical for our customers. And so looking at exactly what the processor is doing step by step is becoming very important. Standard Trace tends to look at um, how the program is branching and how it's jumping and kind of infers from that what the program is doing. With Cycle Accurate, you're looking at a step-by-step, -step, literally a cycle-by-cycle, -cycle, when every cycle counts kind of approach. Um, so, as I say, there's, there's some technical detail there in the words. If you want to know more, call a Hanan later or better still go and see his presentation on Thursday. Um, I feel like I've probably skipped through this too quickly. Should I sing and dance or something? No? Um, so just in summary, as I said, today's systems are very much, that they're just too hard to understand with traditional tools. You need some form of on-chip monitoring. Not least, in, I mean, you know, algorithms are different now. So if you're looking at machine learning and AI, they're inherently non-deterministic. You don't know what the device is going to be doing until it's doing it. So there's a great need for on-chip monitoring from, from that point of view. You do need to understand what the system is doing in real life as well as in the lab. Um, one key dimension to this is to be able to trace. And that, that's what we're basically talking about today. Um, and coupling that with a, a non-intrusive infrastructure that will monitor all of the actions of the chip is another key step. I'm not going to read out the Ultrasoc slogan. Oh, yes, I will. Ultrasoc ensures systems do what they were designed to do safely and securely. And I think, other than a quick plug for Hanan, that's where we end. Thanks.